Hey game makers! Today we'll be doing an inventing tutorial requested by Shironiku. I'll be calling it the Magical Book of Plot Convenience Tutorial. Basically, we'll have a book item to which we'll find pages for it. The pages we find will let us view a specific cutscene, and then the page will no longer be accessible. Keep in mind, this is just one example of a way to do this. I've already set everything up, so we're just going to go through and see how it works. First, we're going to want to create our book item. We're going to create our book called Magical Book of Plot Convenience. You'll probably want to have it set as a key item, and no under consumable, so that it can be reused. Scope is none, and have the occasion set to menu screen. The only other thing we have to do here is, under effects, set it to call a common event. In our case, common event 2, book item. With that set up, now we have to program in the common event it'll call. Head over to the common events tab and select the ID number of the one you have your item set to call. In our case, number 2, book item. This is where all of the book's events is going to be written. Let's explain what all of this does, shall we? First thing we have is label start. You can find this command on the first page of the event commands, under flow control. The name itself doesn't matter, as long as you use it consistently for this item. We're using this so, in the case the event can't be accessed, you'll be sent back to the beginning of the event instead of closing it out and having to reopen your book again. Next we have some text. You're using a book, jump to which page? Page zero to close the book. After that, there's an input number command. This can be found under messages on the first event commands page. This will let the player select a number as a variable. This is where it starts to get a bit confusing. The way we're doing this, we'll need a different variable for each page number. I've listed 1 through 9, but we'll only be focusing on the first one for now. You'll need one more variable as well, for the page number. In our case, variable 12, page number. This is the variable you'll want to set for the input number command, as the player will be picking the page number to go to. Set the number of digits you want, so 1 for 1 through 9 pages, 2 for 10 through 99, and so on. We're just setting it to 1, since we're only doing 9 pages. With that okayed, the next thing we want is a conditional branch. Again, page 1 under flow control. Set variable to your page number variable, and set the constant to 1. Click OK. Inside that branch, we're going to create another set of conditional branches. These next three are basically going to say, if variable page 1 equals 0, you don't have the page, so jump back to the start. If variable page 1 equals 1, you do have the page, so let's go to the cutscene. If variable page 1 equals 2, you've watched the cutscene and no longer have access to it. Jump back to the start. So, when you either don't have a page, or you've already seen the cutscene, we have some text. And then a jump to label start. This will jump back to wherever label start happens to be. In the event you have a page and haven't seen it yet, that is, when our page 1 variable is set to 1, we're going to have the game tell us we have the page, then memorize our actor's location, and teleport us to a cutscene map. For memorizing our actor's location, we're using three variables. One for the player's x-coordinates, one for their y-coordinates, and last, one for their map ID. You'll find these all listed under control variables, game data, character for their x and y locations, and other for their map ID. We'll be using these so we can teleport our player back after the cutscene is finished. Anyway, we're going to teleport them to page one's cutscene map, click OK, and now let's head over to the map the cutscene takes place on. In this case, we're on a nice boat. Er, I mean, coast ship. Heh. <laughs> I have MB Echo here set to auto run, since the map will only be used for this cutscene. If you're planning on making your cutscene on a map the player normally has access to, I'd suggest putting your book cutscene on a switch and turning it on before you teleport here. The cutscene we made here isn't all that interesting. She talks, plays some animations, and talks some more. The only important part is, make sure to set your page 1 variable to the number 2 before your cutscene is finished. This will tell our book that page 1's cutscene is complete. After the scene is done, we're going to teleport to a previous location. Set up a transfer player command, and select designation with variables. ID should be your map ID variable, X should be your player X variable, and Y should be your player Y variable. Then click OK. Now, if you have any extra things playing in your cutscene, like pictures, specific music, background sounds, etc., you'll want to make sure to turn those off, preferably after the transfer player command, as these will still occur, but not until you're out of the current map first. In the case of background music, on page 2 of the event commands, under audio and video, you can add a save BGM command in your book common event before you teleport. Then, when you teleport back from our cutscene event, add the replay BGM command at the end of your cutscene event to start your old music up again. I would have done this, but it totally slipped my mind while I was recording this. Yeah, who uses music in cutscenes, I know, right? <laughs> Additionally, if you're planning on allowing the player access back into your cutscene map, you'll want to create a new blank event page on your cutscene events. 
Set the page to become active if the page variable's number equals 2, so it doesn't try to replay itself when you get back there. The last thing we're going to do is have an event on our starting map that sells us the book item, and another event to give us page 1. By that, I mean she's going to set page 1's variable to the number 1. With all of that edited in, let's test this. Goggles Hero will give us the book, and Pigtails will give us page 1. If you try accessing page 1 without the page, it tells you you don't have the page. If you have the page, it takes you to the cutscene. And if you try to use it again after, it won't let you. Now, to make more pages, all you need to do is copy the page number conditional branch, and everything in it. Paste the copy underneath, and change the page number variable to equal 2 for page 2. And change all the variables beneath it to page 2's variable instead of page 1's. And lastly, change where the cutscene teleporter takes you. And that's it! You now have a magical cutscene book! I hope you found this useful, and if you have any other MV requests for eventing, plugins, or even game demos, feel free to ask me in the comments! Till next time, later gamers!